Hi, my name is Paul Grogan, and in this Gaming Rules video, I'm going to be going through the differences between the original version of Through the Ages and the new version of Through the Ages. So the original game, this is a this is the 2006 original box. If you've got the old edition of the game, your box might look like this, or it might look slightly different, because there's been some graphical changes over the years. However, it's always been the same game. 2015 brought us a new story of civilization, which is not only um, graphical changes and a new box, but also a number of rule changes. So yes, so this video I'm going to be covering the differences between the old and the new, comparing them, and hopefully you find it useful. So the first big change is in the artwork, illustrations and graphic design. Everything in the game has had a complete overhaul, uh, so all, all new artwork for, for all the cards, and yeah, complete redesign of, of all the graphics. So you can see here that the player board has had a redesign, uh, not only with the new artwork, but there's some other little things on here as well. So for example, the cost to build the buildings, uh, the farms and the mines and the urban buildings, is a civil action, so you can see that by the, the white circle. But the cost to build a military unit, you see the circle's red, that means it costs a military action to build the unit. So it's little things like that which will make the game a little bit more easier to learn and easier to play. The military scoreboard, the science track and the culture track have also had a graphical redesign, although they do function in a similar way. You'll notice that there is an area at the centre of the military track, that's for shared tactics which I'll come on to later on. Also in this new version of the game there are no limits on military strength, science and culture production. There used to be a hard limit on them in the old edition and now there's no limits. Another useful thing about the graphic design on the new cards is that the cards which you play as your political action all have a crown in the top left as you can see from these cards. So there was some confusion before of oh, when do I play this card and now it's fairly simple. If there's a crown in the top left that's your political action. The end of age board has also had, well, first of all, we have an end of age board, which we didn't before. You just used to put the cards on the table. But now you can see when we take the last card from that age, it reveals all of the steps that you need to follow at the end of that age. So it goes through all of the things you do at the end of that age. The rules haven't changed. It's just graphically clearer. Lots of cards have been rebalanced in this edition. We've used data from thousands of online games to find out which cards were being taken all of the time and which cards were not really taken by the good players at all. A lot of the cards have been rebalanced. The ones which were a little bit too strong have been brought back a bit and the ones which nobody was taking, they've been made a lot stronger. Some of the other cards have just had some slight tweaks like changes to the cost of them or the science cost, but you know, the, the cards are essentially the same, uh, and other cards have had completely new abilities as well. So apart from the graphical overhaul, the military aspect of the game is probably the biggest way it's been changed, and it's been changed in a number of different ways. But basically, the military aspect of the game, in the original version, it could get a little bit out of control, with very high military strengths, and a player could dominate the game with military, especially in a two-player game. And this was never the real intention of the game. The idea was that you're not supposed to be able to win the game with military, but you can certainly lose the game if you don't have it. However, after lots and lots of data was analysed from lots of games, it, found, it was found that military can very often become the dominating factor in the game. So, the, there's a number of rules changes that have been made for this edition. The first one is that you are no longer allowed to sacrifice units in aggressions or wars, okay? That's quite a big change. So in the old edition of the game, you were able to sacrifice both the attacker and the defender, and now you can't do it at all. So no sacrificing of units in aggressions or wars from either side. The second big change is the way that tactics work. So the tactics cards are played as normal, and you get use of it as soon as you play it, but then at the start of your next turn, the tactics card is moved into the shared area. You put your marker on it to show that it is yours, but now, at some point later in the game, other players can spend two military actions and they can adopt that tactic as well. So you don't lose it, but they've got it as well. It's effectively the same as them drawing and then playing the card. Now, in this example, green and red have now adopted the fighting band. If red, at some point later in the game, plays their own tactic, so the conquistadors, then red will get that tactic exclusively for one turn. But at the start of red's next turn, that card will be moved to the shared area 
And then, for example, even later on, Green could spend two military actions and Green could adopt that tactic as well. So you can only ever have one tactics card that is yours at any time, which is why you've only got one of the banner tokens. Another thing you can do in the new version is when somebody plays an aggression against you, you play your military cards in defense. Now, in the old edition of the game, you were only able to play defense cards. And these would give you a certain number of defense points depending on the age of the card. In the new version of the game, you can also discard any other military cards from your hand to give you one point of defense. Now, there is a limit on how many cards you can use to defend yourself, which is equal to the number of military actions that you've got. So if you've got three military actions, you could use one defense card and two other cards, for example. If we take a look at the end of turn sequence now, the first thing you'll notice is that the discarding of military cards is at the start and drawing military cards is at the end. Now, they are both outside of the production phase. Now, you skip your production phase during an uprising. So what this means is even if you do have an uprising, you still have to discard cards, military cards and draw military cards after the production phase has finished. So onto this discarding excess military cards. This used to happen way earlier in the turn. It used to happen straight after your political action. So what you had to do is you did your political action. Once that had been resolved, you would then discard your excess military cards. But quite often you would then play your turn and go, oh, wait a minute, I've changed my mind. I kind of wanted to keep that one. So by moving it to here, it doesn't really change the game that much. It just makes it a little easier to play. So discarding of excess military cards happens now at the end of your turn and it happens at the start of your end of turn sequence. The next thing to mention is corruption. And you'll notice that corruption happens now before production. Well, it's, it's in the production phase, but it happens before food production. It used to happen after resource production. Now, this basically means the game is a lot easier to work out. It's very, very simple to work out whether you're going to be corrupted or not. You no longer have to do the maths in your head to go, oh, right, I'm producing three of that. I'm going to spend two of that. that oh, I'm going to be corrupted. And you might then decide to undo your turn. So now it's really simple. If you see the either the minus two, the minus four or the minus six at the start of your turn, you know that unless you spend some blue cubes, you're going to be corrupted. So it's a lot easier to work out whether you're going to be corrupted or not. Uh, to compensate for that, you have actually only got 16 blue cubes in your blue bank instead of the 18 that you had in the original game. Another slight tweak to the rules is that when you replace a leader, so when you've already got a leader into play and when you play a new one to replace him, that you get the, the civil action that you used to do that back. So that doesn't mean it's free. You still need to have a civil action, but when you use that civil action, you get that civil action back. Players resigning from the game is still a part of the game. However, if you declare war on somebody and they do resign on their turn, then actually the war isn't completely wasted. You gain seven culture instead. It's kind of as if it was the armed intervention card. Also, you're not allowed to resign during age four. So that's it. I hope you found this video useful in comparing the old edition of the game to the new edition. Take care and thanks for watching.